Yo, yo, Rap Grid Radio. It's your boy, Direct. I'm here with my co-host, Sonny Bam. Hey! Yo, we got some special guests in the building today, man. What up, Von Jeff? What's good? What's good? Rap Grid, what's going on? Uh-huh. We got my man, Quest McCody over here. What's cracking? You know what I mean? I see you shot. My man shot in the background. Shout, Shout out to Cal and Alcorn. Shout out to the producer, Alf the God. The big homie, you the know OG what I mean? Abyss is in this bitch as well. Atlanta legend, you know? Yeah, man. So, I mean, <laughs> technical issues in the background, but we all good. So we're going to hop into it like this, man. Real conversational. Von Jeff, man, for the people who don't know who you are, I feel like you are definitely one of the behind the scenes most influential people in battle rap. Um, I've heard a lot about you from multiple different people. So can can you please tell all the fans out there what your background is? What's going on, people? This is Vaughn Jeff, director A and R, Fight Club, MTV Two, live and direct all the way from Brooklyn, New York, out here in the A. You know, it's been a, it's been a minute, direct. Like we supposed to do this interview. Yeah. You know? and it's interesting how we end up here in Atlanta. We're supposed to do this in New York, but you know, mm-hmm. God got His own way of working. So glad to be in the A right now to do this interview. You know. Yeah, and, and for y'all that don't know what he's talking about, um, I was judging the Total Slaughter event this past weekend and um i was trying to get my flight extended to the 15th so i can meet up with him and do like a quick interview for rap grid but just my plane ended up getting canceled so i'm like cool like i can stay and he ended up in atlanta so i came home and he was still here so i was like let's just do it at the radio station so in my in my situation i told direct i gotta go to cancun and i'll be back monday yeah. but i gotta leave tuesday so let's try to do it either monday night or when i get back on wednesday I get to Atlanta, coming through the airport, some BS happened, you know, a little situation that caused me to stay in Atlanta longer than I expected to, mm-hmm. you know, and you hit me on the phone, like, yo, I'm here an extra day in New York, and I'm like, damn, I'm here in Atlanta for a couple <laughs> more days, you know, so it all worked out, you know, here we are. Yeah, I know. So, um, so you said you're the A&R. Direct A&R. Direct A&R. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's dope. So, uh, explain to us. Can you can you kind of give us the timeline of Fight Club as far as like like you know your humble beginnings how y'all started popping off? Um, I, I know a lot of people said that that the that the first big look was the Remy and Lady Luck right, right, right. battle that's was what got y'all the the national exposure. And uh, can you just kind of walk us through like like just how how y'all blew up? All right, well, um, you know, Fight Club the inception of that was from two interns, you know, going at it. First of all, let me shout out. International P, you get what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't even be the director and all if it wasn't for International P. You know, he was running the studio where I was recording that at the time. It was called Dark Dimensions. And then, you know, as I said, the interns did what they had to do. And the idea sparked from there, you know, and he offered me the opportunity. So that was back in like 2000, 2003, 2004, around that time, you mm-hmm. know. And then Lady Luck and Remy Martin, that battle was the one that really got us recognized. So what were y'all doing? Like, what kind of battles were going on before that? Before Lady Luck and Remy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, the it was a it was a discrepancy between the two interns, two female interns at the okay. time. And P was like, "Yo, why don't y'all just battle it out?" Because one was an artist and one was an intern that actually rapped. Matter of fact, it was an artist mm-hmm. that was recording there, and it was an intern that was a rapper. So he's like, "Yo, why don't y'all just battle it out or whatever?" So from there, you know, they just started inviting local. Um, artist to go at, at the pool table mm-hmm. you know and back then you know Riggs Morales was involved and stuff so when people see yeah. that idea Riggs Morales was the A&R from was it Shady? From Shady yeah, yeah. alright from Shady you know so with that influence and then you know people start making phone calls I got this artist here I got this artist there and then next you know it grew up to Lady Luck and Remy Morgan at that pool table and like like I said like that was the one where people were like because of their names you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. those was like not just regular people off the off the streets battling they both had names for themselves and then the industry just took an interest from there so that's when Lady Luck was um signed to Def Jam at the time right I'm not sure if she was still signed but okay. that's what people recognized her for because she had songs on the radio she had videos that was on TV and everything so her name was definitely out there then you know Remy was running with Terror Squad and all that so their names was definitely holding weight and then for it to be females at that and going at it like you know yeah like that you know so that's crazy because I th- always thought that it had been going on for like a super long time before y'all got that battle when it was like 
Yeah, it was a couple. It was a couple battles before that. I mean, so it there was wasn't like years. Y'all weren't that. doing like the regular Monday night thing for a long time before the Remy Ma shit popped off like that. That happened it wasn't real years, early. It wasn't then. years before that. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't years before that actual battle. Okay, so y'all blow up. So after that is uh is that when y'all put together the first season? Um. Well, what we started doing, we started um. You know, first and foremost, like how y'all got the camera, tape and everything. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? We had our own editing staff. We had our own cameras and all that kind of stuff. Um, once we started, you know, the Power Summit, Mix Show Power Summit was popping at that time. Yeah. So we did the 2004 in Puerto Rico. We did a, a 2005 in the Bahamas. That's when, you know, Jen, he took those. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and like I said, in the process of filming all that, all that footage and stuff like that, that's how the actual season started to come about. And we like, we packaged it together. And then, okay. like I'm not from the business side. If I deal with the artists specifically, so mm-hmm. like when when they started packaging the material and presenting and shopping it around, you know, MTV took a uh, took an interest. You know, but prior to that, there was DVDs and things things of that nature. You know, we had the distribution through. Um, Fontana Universal mm-hmm. had that situation. That was a DVD situation, so okay. we packaged it with interviews and battles and stuff like that. So that's the, around the time the DVDs was really popping because right, Smack right, was right. out, and Smack. there was a couple other joints. Uh, yeah. the, the Cocaine City, French Cocaine Montana, City. Yeah, yeah. Headliners. Yeah. I remember going to that era, boy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, speaking of Cocaine City, I remember seeing this DVD a long time ago where it had uh, French. Montana and Mook going back and forth and they ended up supposed to battle and um I asked Mook about it and he was kind of like yo it didn't happen like he didn't really want to talk about it like that you know what I'm saying like like what was that whole back and forth beef about um well at that particular time I heard heard about it mm. you know I know French like French French can make a situation look bigger than what it really is. Like, the French know how to negotiate and, and, and get in the mix of things. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he was running around with Cocaine City and everything. So at Fight Club, he wanted to, I think he wanted to battle uh, Moot, but it just ain't really pan out the way that it was supposed to, you know. Um, he actually battled Scar Child at Fight Club. I remember so, Scar Child. So that's, so, that's the, so that's the footage that's actually out there. So as far as like the whole Mook situation, it wasn't nothing set in stone where um, Mook and French battling that Fight Club. It wasn't It wasn't anything <coughs> set up to that nature. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think. So you mentioned the Mix Show Power Summons. Now, from from your perspective, in case for people that don't know, it's a big, um, it's like a networking event. Yeah, they pick the like exotic industry, locations. The whole industry is there. Yeah, so it's, it's where a lot of artists meet the DJs, right? Right, right, right. So the one in Puerto Rico, y'all had Jay Mills, Jen, recognized who just won the Rockefeller deal Recognize. with the MTV, mm. and um, Shells, right? Shells, Shells, yeah. So that, like, was that, that was Puerto Rico 2004. And how much money was the prize for that? 50000 That first one was 50000 and and um, it was a car. I forgot what kind of car it was. It was a car, though. Oh, really? Yeah. So how like, like how did y'all go about putting that together, and how did you get signed? Because all of them were signed at the time, right? It must have cost a lot of money to get everybody out to. Nah, but at the same time, it was like that was the, that was the, that was the, the Mix Show Power Summer was, was its own event. You know, okay. But Fight Club, you know, we had our um our brand, so we actually hosted the battle there. You okay. Know what I'm saying so, like you got the different record labels that's there, but as far as Fight Club as a as a battle rap brand, you know, we had our own event there at the Mix Show Power Summit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And if you you know that that was just crazy, you know. So these these are artists that actually already battle. This is what they do. Mm-hmm. So of course they're looking at this moment where the whole industry is there. They want to use that to catapult their career, whether they signed or not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is the prime time moment to actually do it. While you got DJs there, you got executives there, you got other artists there. You know, so um, at that particular time, like you said, it was Shells and, um, you know, Jen took that one. But Yeah. So I think that era had a lot more connection. Like, it seemed like battle rap was a lot more connected to the industry than it is now. Because now it's really these independent YouTube-based leagues, right? And then, in that time, it was a lot of cats. Like, when Jen went from 106 and Park, which is already like an industry-connected thing. It's on national mm-hmm. TV. When he went from 106 and Park to being actually signed to like a label right. that was popping at the time, that wasn't like the craziest thing in the world. If a dude from like King of the Dot or whatever like got signed to like make like you know Ross or something right now, it would be like wild. You know what I mean? So I think at that time it was a lot more connected 
to like the industry and a lot you know what i'm saying yeah i think i think now battle rap is like its own industry you know what i yeah, mean yeah 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 i think at that time you had 106 and park and fight club and a smack was like kind of just starting but it's still a super super duper like bootleg like just getting its you know feet wet type of industry yeah. it's not you know what i mean like it's not running like like a commercial yeah um mainstream product at this so point. you got those yeah, you know those mainstream mean? commercial um industries looking for the battle rap industries now because it's like oh look at the views that they get yeah yeah no absolutely so they want to they want to tie I mean, total slaughter is a perfect example perfect yeah, example of like you know some people with some actual money you know what i mean like mainstream connections industry connections getting into it you know what i mean that's obviously the perfect that's example the right now. i think the artists mm-hmm. if we would if the artists involved would take advantage of that like i see all the time like we have artists that are like yo pay me x y and z to do this battle and to do that battle we're at the point now where you're generating like there's no reason somebody let's say like an arsenal or a um who else has got a just a shitload of views i know nobody's got more yeah, views like, arsenal, like a like surf a man a surf conceited and yeah. um conceited um you're you your twenty, thirty million views, your million views of battle, you're worth something to somebody's company. Yeah. The leagues don't even have to pay you if you think about it the same way LeBron got a salary and can get sponsorship. What do you think exclusive vodka is when Smack do you know those are yeah. sponsorships that are helping fund mm-hmm. the battle, the MCs, we could use that same type of sponsorship and you know, yeah, getting the twenty five hundred or whatever you might for that particular battle is kind of like short term money versus right. like building building that resume and your numbers. You know what I mean? So speaking of the numbers, how did you like like how hard was it for you guys to get fifty thousand dollars in prize money to give away at a battle, being that it, the times weren't like they are now? How hard was it? I mean, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like the fifties. It's not like cast. Yeah, but yeah, but I, I know now people are like, "Battle Rap gets three hundred million views. Give us money. You can put that in a sponsorship package." Back then, was it kind well, of well? Like, you you know, um, sponsors pretty much. You know, it's not it wasn't really based on like views or anything like that. It's like at that particular time, it's like it was more so the pot for. Now you got like dudes individually getting paid. Everybody mm-hmm. wasn't individually getting paid. It's like you had to battle to get that that pot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like. Um, you know, with sponsors and then people putting up money and things of that nature, it's like that's what it really was back then at that time. So rather you know, than spending like fifty grand on a, on summer madness that Smack might do, they just put that into one pot. Everybody you get at you either get fifty grand or nothing type thing. Right, right. Yeah. But now it's like in the, each individual right. is being paid. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like I um I haven't been in the loop too much lately, but I I still watch. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I I hear a lot of conversations and stuff. So like when you see dudes battling, like oh I got paid this and you getting paid that, that individual is still getting paid, but you can't pay them the same thing. Yeah. Sometimes depending on the, depending on how much viewership you got or how what your what your brand is. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. A lot of dudes is losing using this to catapult their brand. So dudes is not just doing it as far as like, oh, I just want to do the battle rapping thing. Like dudes is getting into fashion, film, yeah, their own even productions and stuff like that. That's why I look at Arsenal. Like when you mentioned Arsenal, I, I I respect that dude. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like he keeps keep climbing. You yeah, know? You get yeah. what I'm saying? He keeps climbing. You know, and from the first time I saw him at at Fight Club, I was like. Dude is serious. You know what I'm saying? To be where he at right now is mm-hmm. like he did know, Fight Club. He must have been young. This was what oh nine. That's when he yeah, battled Hollow. Battled, uh, Hollow. Like, oh, nine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's that's talking right. about yeah, that yeah. was kind of like the right. Fight Club's like reincarnation yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for that moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's what's up. That so, was in a new building. Yeah. Was young, yeah, was right. yeah. yeah. This is yeah. what I want to ask you too. Um, explain to us how the Fight Club rules went because I don't think it was, I, I ever seen it officially explained, but it seemed like you had like three minute rounds, then you had overtime, then sudden death overtime. All like, right. all right, with Fight Club thing about it that makes fight club unique is like in any in any sports there's regulations mm. you know so technicalities and all that so like even if you stutter mm. that's a technicality you know what i'm saying the rules is basically um it's three rounds 60 seconds each round you know what i'm saying if you like p said if you stutter you gone you know what i'm saying you supposed to come to the table with professionalism you could freestyle uh 
kick rents, however you, whatever you choose to do, that's how you choose to, to battle. Mm -hmm. But you got to stay within those guidelines. Like your man is not really ad libbing your lyrics and all that kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So none of that is really going on. You know, um, that's the main basic basic rules of it. You know, but you got to come with your uh, your flow. We judge them on um, flow, lyrical content, showmanship. So it's got to be well packaged. So how did how did the overtimes work? Was there was like a sudden, sudden death, death one? Is time, uh, no time limit on sudden death. So okay. the judges can't decide. You know, you always have the celebrity judges, but if they can't decide, then you go to sudden death overtime, and that's unlimited. So if you go a minute and this dude go for three minutes, you know what I'm saying, then that's that's on you. But a person, that's not saying because he went three minutes, you went for a minute that he wins. Like yeah. And the thing, what about what the thing about Fight Club is? What I love about it is you got to be on point. Like you can't really. Sometimes you can have schemes, but it got to be you got to hit that point and get through them yeah. sixty seconds. You know what I'm saying? So your punchlines and metaphors got to be back to back, and that's the good thing about as far as with Fight Club. Like you got to really fit that mold. You know what I'm saying? Our mold is different from other other leagues' molds. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's the interesting thing I lo always loved about it. So, um, I think people have heard about the rumored battles that come out of Fight Club, like uh, Iron Solomon versus Locksmith, uh, Math versus Sirius Jones. Uh, I've seen clips of, like, a Reed Dallas battle. Uh, can you tell us about some battles that might have went down that, that people never even knew about? Um, like, what you want to know about certain battles, like, as mm -hmm. far as the footage-wise? Like, a lot of some, some things, like, when people say the myth, mm -hmm. it may have happened where... It could have been in the audition process. Oh, okay. You know it's like when you see old Reed Dollar say he battled mad artists, but it's like you may have been at that pool table at the actual taping, one one or two battles. But as far as the um, sort of like what proving grounds is. Okay. Like when you when you come to the audition, it's only one winner per night. So some some of those myths may come through. Like yo, I battled him at Fight Club, but it, that may have happened at the audition. And sometimes them auditions is crazier than what you would see at the actual battle taping yeah you get what i'm saying okay. so like you have a lot of dudes that i've auditioned that never got a chance to really make it to the table because of for one it was in the new building mm -hmm. and when i say the new building we was at uh the for like the uh lady luck and remy ma took place at one building and um arsenal and hollow took place at another building on the same block so mm -hmm. like at the new building there was like a lot of um y'all only seen two battles the one with iron solomon and jen that was one that was in the new building and then arsenal and hollow was another uh was another event in the, in that building so a lot of these artists came to the auditions in the new building but a lot of the footage never got put out you get okay. what i'm saying so when they say it's a myth it's not really a myth because <laughs> some of them battles may have happened but then uh uh, artists may feel like y'all beat you there, but she was like, you you know, you're not gonna know until that footage come out. But yeah. the viewers, the public, the public not gonna know until that footage come out. So I I remember there was a time where uh, you guys announced. I think I saw it on Executive Nick's uh, YouTube account. Mm -hmm. It was um, Fight Club was was going on tour, mm -hmm. and I think at that point, like the whole battle community was like, damn, it's over. Like like we can see it now. Probably like kind of close to how big battling is now is kind of like the dream we all saw when y'all announced you were going on tour like everybody's yeah, going to be tell my story about the tour yeah go ahead tell this honey I know <laughs> oh <laughs> man the tour did happen this. though oh yeah so I know I know yeah yeah the tour uh, I got a chance to do the tour when it came to where I was at at the time I was in Indiana and uh, like an hour outside of Indianapolis kind of like Athens is to here and I remember the night that y'all came. I don't even know. I didn't even know what was going on. And there was a there was a show like I already had tickets for. I was going to see with this crazy lineup with Rakim, wow. Brother Ali, and Ghostface. Mm. All That's the a crazy same show. show. So you know, I mean, I was, I was hyped for this shit. I get a call from my homegirl, and she hears because she heard on the radio the Fight Club was going to be in town. You know, they're doing this this tour, or whatever. Like, and you should call up the radio station to you know if you if you're trying to get on. So I call up the radio station. I'm, like, driving at the time, I remember. Somehow get through. You know what I mean? Like, y'all know how hard it is to get through on fucking, like, major radio stations. Somehow get through. I rap for the dude for, like, 60 seconds. And he's like, all right, cool. Come down to the station tonight at, like, this time. Why, why, why? We'll go from there. We'll see if we can get you on. And I'm like, all right, word. So, like, it's like an hour to Indianapolis, right? And I had tickets to this show, but I was like, fuck it. I was, like, young. I was hungry. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm trying to yeah. get, get popping. You know what I mean? 
Um, so I was like, fuck it. I drive, my man, me and my dude drive like an hour up to Indianapolis. And uh, we like, we get to the radio station and they have us like go one by one and like rap for the camera, right? And we do like a few verses. And then they're like, all right, um, we'll call, we're going to go back to the car, watch the footage and we'll call you and to see if you're going to be in the shit tonight in the little like four man or eight man tournament tonight at the club, all right? And we were like, all right, cool. So they got our numbers. And I was like, yo, I'm not going to try to like, I'm not going to like wait around and miss this show and they don't even call me. So it was like a lose yeah. lose. So I start driving back down to like the town I was in, drive an hour back, right, from Indianapolis. Get the call when I get down, back down to the <laughs> show. And I was like, fuck it, I'm hungry. Let's get it. You know what I mean? So I go back up there. I get back up to Indy. And uh, we're in the club. You know, like she gets pushed back. Like it's like like 2.30, club closes at 3. And we're like, yo, when's this, when's this battle going to start? You know what I mean? Finally, it just starts. And uh, it's like an eight-person thing. So it's like eight to four to two type thing, right? End up like chewing the first two dudes, right? Um, and then the club closes and I'm like, fuck. So we have, like, everybody goes outside. We have to do the third round on the finals. Just in like the parking battle rap. Lot. <laughs> in the parking just like lot. battle rap. <laughs> in the parking lot, right? And uh, I chew the last dude, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm like, word, you know what I mean? I give the dudes, like, all the faculty dudes, like, all my information. And they're like, word up. Like, we're going to hit you up. All the winners are going to fly them to New York. And, like, it's going to be on MTV. It's going to be crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, shit, it's crazy, word. Let's get it pop. So then, like, I remember they even, like, called me, like, 15 minutes after, like, I left just to, like, make sure it was my number. Like, my phone rings. And I was like, hello? And they're like, yo, we're just making sure it's was the right it number. I don't know. I'm just, uh, <laughs> I didn't go to Indiana. Oh, okay, word, okay. Word, word. Yeah. I was like, they even like, like I said, they even called to confirm the number. And yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, yo, this might actually happen. Like, let's go. You know what I mean? So, uh, long story, never got the call, never saw the footage. I was like heartbroken and shit. You know what I mean? But like, it is. I remember we were hyped. Was, and at the time, yeah, yeah. the only, like the only footage I had was my man's like 2000, what year was it? 05 or something? 07. Oh, oh, seven. His 2007 cell phone footage, you know what I'm saying? It's like so the Sprint Sanyo grimy joint. and grainy, and that's like <laughs> yeah. the only, you, you can like kind of tell that's international piece. So I was like, I did Fight Club, I, was, I did it for real, like look at international You can't even put it on YouTube, huh? It was for a while, like in the first days of YouTube. I don't, I can't find it anymore, I feel like, but yeah. It was what it was. Yeah, you, know what you could have been Fight Club champion. I could have been the dude. I could have been like the white gin and shit. There was no <laughs> little white dude doing that shit. You know, <laughs> knows, bro. I could have chewed, dude. The white gin. I'm saying. Oh, man. And so, I wouldn't have freestyled either, so yeah. I would have, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you don't want to be the white gin. Nah, fuck that. I would have been the like Chinese the, the written gin. white gin, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 fuck that shit. So, you know what's crazy? Speaking of gin, I want to ask you, too. So he's the Fight Club champion for like the longest time, right? And he's winning the power summits and all that. But before the, the second one, the second power summit, he battled Sirius Jones. And it's crazy because I used to always hear about Fight Club battles on like DVDs from this, from you like you go in the city, buy DVDs, and they talk about them sometimes, mm -hmm. or just like stuff that Miss Info would write on her blog. Right, right. It's real and, exclusive. Yeah. So like I, I would never really know. I would just hear stuff. And then I remember just turning on BT one day and seeing like Sirius Jones chew him. And I was just like, Wow! Like, who is this dude? I think I hate if this Remy nigga. Ma, I feel like if the Remy Ma and Lady Luck battle took it to a new level, I feel like that serious and Jin battle introduced it to like another wider, like yeah. a wider range of people. For some reason, I just feel like that event really popped off. You know what I mean? We, we did that with uh, all hip hop. We did okay. that. We did that with all hip hop. Um, and it definitely did take it to the next level because Jen just coming off of winning that fifty thousand, and he was hot at that time. Like, at that time, yeah, rough, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. because at the same time in hip hop, like you no, know, have and I'm not, not saying because he's Asian or whatever, but because over in Asia, hip hop is 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 big. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But just to have that diversity in the battle element, you know what I'm saying? It was just so crazy. So it's like and. Serious balls was crazy. I can't even. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's right, was one of the was, top body bags in it battle history. Yeah, it, on, it was crazy. You know, so the hype coming off that hype, it was just like you know all the blogs was talking about it. Then it was on the networks and everything. You know, that's crazy. Like that battle, like yeah, that's crazy. I mean that. Like, Lord balls. knows, <laughs> not just Fight Club taking it to a new level after that, but Serious Jones went from yeah. being a nobody to being like a household yeah. name. Yeah. After I that. remember when I saw him beat. When I saw that battle, I was like, because as a battle rapper, you know, you're always sizing yourself up who, who that, and, and you're still a fan too. So you're mm -hmm. watching 106 in Park and you're like, oh man, they keep losing to this guy. Boom. And Jim was one of those guys in an era where people were doing the freestyle more so. 
that when you yeah. see him at the venue, you weren't ready for something like a gin. So yeah. when him and Jones battled, Jones prepared. Even though he had a lot of free style stuff in there, he still yeah. prepared. And I think like that was part of that transition into the written format because with the with the freestyle with the freestyle tournament style battles that we do in Detroit or whatever or that we did prior to that landscape, Jim was a like you didn't expect that. So it was no way to prepare. It's like before you saw a white boy that had bars, not just okay always there's but, always uh, like that handicap like, role you know in the underdog card yeah and you're like females get it fe- white dudes uh, right, you know right. asian yeah. dudes like always and and it's like and, and, well go ahead no nah, but when that happened it was like wow he can he can get beat <laughs> like like yeah he, that was like welcome to the new era right? you know what absolutely. i mean about he was serious. untouchable before that the thing about serious is like like you said that freestyle that freestyle element see the good thing like about serious He'll come with some written, but he will always end off with something spontaneous at that moment. So he capitalized on that moment by seeing the the MTV or the seeing the microphone there and acting as a news reporter. Like that was just, crazy. Like, that I was remember like, yeah. so spontaneous, and he was very very good at that. And one thing I want to highlight too about that particular battle before battling Jen, he battled um too much, which was from um from England. It was a four man yeah. tournament, right? right it was right. Streets the, the Block from Dipset. Too um, much bodied, or I don't know if he bodied him. I don't remember the actual battle, but he beat uh, X, X Factor, right? Yeah, too yeah, much, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah That's yeah, when he was talking yeah, about yeah, Bizarre and Bizarre yeah, got mad. X-Factor. That's the first time I ever seen Bizarre yeah, get mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too, much, too much was on this shit at that time. But the crazy thing is, in the audition, uh, too much, too much had beat Sirius Jones. Oh shit! In the audition in the audition in the first building. So this was like. Oh couple, shit! Like some like unreleased years, some time before, so like at this at the at the actual um all hip hop event, Sirius wasn't playing with him. I popped the toaster <laughs> you know and burned this little English he, muffin. He, like, wasn't, he <laughs> wasn't playing with him. Like, much, listen, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna do this now. Yeah, this you know room is filled with a lot of like battle rap knowledge and like total like nerd geek shit, right? And yeah, I'm gonna yeah. be honest with y'all, I never saw too much on any other format or platform before or after Fight Club. Never. Well, let me let me tell ever. you something about, about you know too I mean? much. Who is, is um, that dude? Like, that dude just appeared and disappeared. You know what I'm saying? Where are you, too much? You listening to this well, shit, bro? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. Well, I don't know if you know about this, but when um when they did the second uh, Make Show Power Summit, the one in the Bahamas. With where, Professor Green. When yeah, when Professor that, Green. He, but he, he, yeah, he, Professor Green came from Jump Off, but he won like 120-something yeah, like, like Jump Off battles. Major artist over there. Yeah, but... I know too much. Um, I think he was. I don't think he was a part of Jump Off, but I think he was a part of something else. So you did see I, something else. Yeah, I saw okay. too much on Jump Off, and I want to say he got banned because there was this dude named Saint who like had an I ongoing thing. Him. I remember and him. Saint, like him and Saint, Indian got dude. in an argument, and he swung at Saint oh, in word. the battle. Yeah, so Damn. I don't know if that like ended his whole. I don't, huh. Well, direct I'm not battle rap knowledge ended. is clearly deeper. Than I'm not gonna <laughs> say it ended, but that's kind of crazy that you say that because I know before. He was always in some sort of like issue, like legal issues and stuff like that. Like, yeah. so he wanted to do the, the 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 battle rap thing, but like back where he was from, like he was just getting caught up in certain Damn, things. Like, too much to, like, like that. I had he no was idea. always getting caught up in something. So for you to he say that, like, much. I wouldn't say like, oh, that's not true or whatever. But so how did you know. so he just showed up at an audition in New York? Nah, P uh, P actually um, somebody knew of him mm-hmm. from from the from the Fight Club camp. Somebody knew of him, and then he actually was out here. You know, he was actually staying in the studio for a point in time and then, you know, working on his bars. He was at there, there for the audition and everything. That's when he had audition um, okay. against, against Sirius Jones, you know. Um, and then we was actually interested in really, really messing with him at a point in time, like as far as, like, possibly signing him and all that kind of stuff. No you know? So, But like I said, due to whatever he was getting in back home, it was like, you know, some people don't want to deal with a risk sometimes. Yeah. You know. That's crazy. I always thought that if there was a dude from overseas, it would have been Professor Green to get in there first. You know what I mean? So it was crazy to see too much. So too much was on there before the pro green gen stuff. Yeah, yeah, that was before. Mm-hmm. So uh, another interesting thing is I don't know if you ever seen or y- both of y'all ever seen this, but uh, Fight Club threw a tournament to see who would get. I mean, my bad. Jump off through a tournament in London to see who would get in Fight Club. And Professor Green won it. That's how he ended up, uh, in the and, yeah, in the Bahamas, and um, he had battled. I'm taking your job, right? <laughs> he battled uh, 
Axel, who was the champion at the time, right? Yeah, he battled Axel. See, we had this thing called Fight Club Elite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you had different different um, artists that was elite. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. Axel was one of the Fight Club Elite. Okay. So he battled. You draw straws, right? And well, what, to uh, to pick who battles first. Is that how y'all did it? Nah, we flip a coin. Oh, you flip oh, a coin. You mean at the um in the Bahamas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't recall drawing straws. I want to see. They did if they did. I, yeah. I don't, Who the fuck draws straws? I don't. I could have sworn I heard. Like I, 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 I want to say nobody actually does that. Shit. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know it was a saying. I thought niggas had straws. Have, have ten of them, and one of them is slightly <laughs> shorter than the rest. Yeah, I didn't know. My bad. My bad. Niggas don't draw straws. We know. We know. We don't draw straws though. They play rock paper scissors. You know what I'm saying. I have to have shuck some was, corn. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You yeah. y'all body bagging me for this shit. Yeah, but that uh, was crazy out there though, Bahamas. Yeah, I, I'm so, glad they stopped the power summit though. This is this is what I want to get to that in a second. But I, I wanted to ask you this: so Professor Green beats Axel in the first round. Is this jump off? Oh, this is the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, Axel, Spanish cat with like a, never um, heard that name. His, when his tooth was chipped or missing, one of his front teeth, I think it was like chipped. The Rick knows everything. Yeah, I yeah. and is I, there I remember anybody how far apart is my though? gap, man. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> this dude. Yeah, he has something. Yeah, like he this. said it yeah. so casually. Is it? He's like, no, y'all know. Y'all Pause. remember how we beat Axel in the first round? Yeah. You remember that second round was stupid. That that fourth and he had bar. The chip too. That fourth I, bar. No, I remember. I, I remember. On. That's why I bring it up because I remember Axel. He had like two long braids, like the international, and he. And Professor Green called him a walrus cross with M- Ricky Martin, and everybody went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 was, I was like, "Oh, that shit's crazy." Fight, like, you know what I'm saying? Ago, bro. And I remember, so he battles Jones, and the winner gets to battle Jen, right? And everyone wanted to see the Jen and Jones rematch. So something I always been wondering, my like a whole time I've been watching battle rap is Jones beats Professor Green. Something happens, and the crowd's like, "One more round, one more round." Wow, that's crazy. Remember? Yeah. So <laughs> Professor Green gets to go one more round yeah. and beats him and gets to battle Jen. So the thing I was wondering is, someone told me I don't even remember who told me this that like Fabulous threw like ten stacks on the stage and was like, "One more round. I want I want to see Professor Green one more round." And that's what started the crowd chanting. I didn't. I don't know. I can't co-sign the whole Fab throwing you know the stacks on the stage, but. I feel being that I feel Siri should have won that personally. Yeah, I feel, yeah. He, I feel he should have won that. I don't think it should have won another round. You know, but it's not. It's about the crowd. You know, it's what the yeah, crowd yeah, yeah. wants. You know, what I'm saying so. The crowd was calling for that. Um, um, as far as the the Fab thing, I, I can't co-sign that. But um, I could tell you a crazy thing. I chased Siri. He was so tight, he broke out. And when Jen tried to call him, I tried to go get him to come back and actually battle. Like yo, he calling you out, my nigga. He, he, but he was tight though. He was like, man, fuck that shit. Like he got robbed on that I, situation. I couldn't believe that that he because he would have had to battle Jen anyway. Wait, so, so I couldn't believe Jen was gonna just battle him just to battle him. Like obviously, like not no he money was gonna involved. Put the, whatever he wanted, he wanted. He's to, gonna put Jen it up. Wanted, Jen wanted to battle him again. And was he, he put up the money, or what? He was gonna put up the money. He, the same money he won. He was like, listen, I he said I want to battle you again. He called him yo, out. Jen's got crazy heart. For no, that um, shit. imagine if Dang. Jen had had killed Sirius and got his like whole shit back. After that, you know what I'm saying? But this was before they actually battled, right? Or this was this after. after? This was oh, this right, was this after. right after. after. This yeah. was right after. Damn, this Jen is right cra- kind. Of, it's kind of bringing back memories of when Jen, yeah. Jen did that. That's crazy. But he's one of the biggest pots, though. So it's like it's kind of crazy for like to take a loss like that, which was for ten cent. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying then to come back again, you won fifty, lost for ten, then come back and win another fifty. So it's like, yeah. You know it's yeah. crazy. I'm gonna be honest with you though. Even though everybody will say that Sirius body Jen when they did, but they only battled the one time, mm-hmm. then, right? Even though everybody would say Sirius clearly ate him, I think that Jen's legacy in battle rap far surpasses Sirius Jones. You know what I mean? It's kind of like Ali losing at the end of his career. You know what I mean? Type shit. Well, I think Jen was the one that got like 106 in Park, like popping, like got everybody Dog, watching. That he is shit. if. Of all the yeah. best known dudes from 106, he's the most well known dude for, to come out of 106. Yeah, in my definitely. opinion, I think that that I wouldn't say that about Jen. Like <clears throat> you wouldn't Jen, say it as far as 106 or as far as the comparison. I wouldn't to say that in the comparison to Sirius. Like I don't look at like Sirius isn't somebody I look at and say I can't do that. But he is someone I look at and say, yo, he was one of the first guys doing that. Like he was. One of the first guys, like when you look at, no matter how you want to compare, when you look at like a hollow, 
mm-hmm. how he mixes that freestyle with the written yeah, yeah, jokes yeah, right, and the right. and the comedy all in the one. That's how serious battle moved. Like that's the first time you saw it brought in and it's coming from the perspective of somebody that was like heavy in the freestyle battle mm-hmm. rap mm-hmm. so when you see him you're like is he freestyling is he not yeah and with Jen it was like it was a shock like he was he, he created the biggest shock but I don't think that as many people that follow the blueprint like I could still see Sirius Jones's blueprint or not even blueprint because I'm not I don't want to do that much but i can see parts of jones's style in a lot of people and i don't see that in jen like i don't think jen did anything original like swan um i don't know if you remember swan Swan. but um swan from detroit and jen were doing the same thing in, in in my opinion what they were doing so it wasn't something fresh like Sirius brought something fresh to me. But you know what's crazy about Jen is like I I seen a lot of people freestyle, but like when you know how you go through those moments when like you kill a battle, yeah. he was having them moments back to back to right. back and his rebuttal game was It was to me it was just about timing. Um, yeah. yeah. And like I'm not I don't think that stylistically he changed the game or anything or he did something that people weren't doing before him. Mm-hmm. I just think that the timing of it I just think that the exposure he was getting on 106, I think, with, like we've talked about, the Asian card, like I just think all these things came together to make him one of the more well-known figures. I just think he's a more well-known, his um, his kind of like era in battle rap like is, is like his own era more so than Sirius is. You think it's because Sirius came back? I think it's because uh, there wasn't necessarily as much competition in Jin's era than Sirius's era. Because Sirius came, I would say his what, like his prime was like after Jin's. I would say that he came in, you know, like when when they battled. I would say it was the end of Jin's kind of era right. and the beginning of Sirius's era. And I feel like in Jin's era there was just not as much one of, like other than one hundred six and maybe right. Fight Club. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a lot of other other things albums, going on. Yeah. There wasn't as many bat- known battle rappers, but I think Sirius just had a lot more competition. But I feel you 100% as far as Sirius being able to uh, do what he did, mixing in freestyles, because to this day, that's rare. And the dudes that can do that are kind of few and far between and stand out because of that, like mm-hmm. Hollow. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's a yeah. huge weapon to yeah. have. I think, huge. I think Sirius brought a charisma to battle rap that a lot of people didn't have it was kind of and, and he spoke to you it wasn't right. like a, oh, his a rapping charisma, rapping and rapping right. I don't think anybody had yeah. could match his when he came into Fight Club nobody had that kind of swagger you know Sirius Jones nobody. was the first rapper I've ever seen grab his nose and go I said yo <laughs> did he start that? did he start that you know how you know how Sirius actually got to the pool table it was, it was a it was a it was a um, it was a battle and um Somebody that was down with us was a personal friend of uh, Sirius Jones, and he was like, it was like a little intermission or something, mm-hmm. and he just kept rapping. And P was like, "Yo, my nigga, like, chill." And this dude just kept rapping, like he wouldn't like stop rapping. And P was like, "Yo, you got to come to audition." And, like it got to the point where like, "Yo, security about to throw you out, my nigga." Like you got to chill. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and Sirius was just he was he was serious about it. You know what I'm saying? And that's mm-hmm. when he actually came to audition and everything and that whole. So he was definitely like. From from that to where he at now, like, dude, he earned where he where he at, you know, because he wanted to get at that table. He was kind of mad too at one point in time. I, I was kind of mad, like when he um, can't say I was mad, you know what I'm saying? But for him to go do the thing when, when he did with Smack with Mook, that was a big battle. That's I want I, 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 I want to I want to ask about that. that. We wanted that. We wanted I, that. I, I, I want to ask about table. that. I think because, there's people. I don't think. I yeah. still think that's undecided. Too. I think there's people that feel, don't. I don't think it's a consensus as far as who and, won. And you're right about that because he's known as the Fight Club dude. You know what I'm saying? So when you step out of your element, it's like it's a whole but he held his own you know what it saying? was like but your company like, name was on the line if he got killed y'all would have looked crazy and yeah. but, and that the same way it, was edited, it ended off on a doubt on you it ended off that so it's like you leave it to be like it seems like yeah you know absolutely. what I'm saying yeah, yeah. for absolutely. the viewers to say oh it looked like he, he, uh-huh. he lost or whatever can be but like you said it's up to who who you no fuck with the That was back when Rex was like still just like the dude behind Mook. Yeah. You, know? you know, you grow up and look at that battle like stuff I didn't notice young. 
Like, I didn't know who Rex was. I didn't know who all these people in the background mm-hmm. were. Them so it's like, nemesis. yeah. So mm-hmm. it's like, you look at, like, Sirius, to this day, I've never seen Sirius on stage with, I mean. mm-hmm. like, I don't know who his people are. But, mm-hmm. like, as the years go by and you look, you're like, oh, that's Nemesis. Oh, that's that's Rex. That's uh, Mook Brother. That's this person. That's mm-hmm. that person. And you notice how many fucking well, tall niggas. Like, it's like, it's like, Kend- it's like chilly and yeah. <laughs> speaking of that and connected to Sirius, it's like Kendrick in that clip with Charles Hamilton and Sirius Jones. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm talking about? Right before yep. Sirius Jones and Charles Hamilton battle, like Kendrick and Charles Hamilton are going back and forth. And it's like Kendrick yeah. is a nobody. Like nobody gives a fuck. He's a Kendrick Charles and J Rock. Huh? He was with Kendrick and J Rock. He, he brought them. Yeah, J Rock is right behind. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Same kind of deal, though. But Charles Hamilton. One thing I want to ask you, because Math brought this up. I say, Math, what happened uh, to your, like, how how come a lot of people didn't get their Fight Club footage released, but you have two battles? Like, that's how we knew Math, because of two battles. Guys, his shit on Fight Club. Yeah, the, Nims, the ba- and the one with Benjamin Benz. And, and Nims was killing Benjamin cats. Benz. And I, I guess. See, that's, that, that's, that, that's that art of freestyling and rebuttaling, you yeah. know what I'm saying, at the right moment, you know what I'm saying? Math Math was, was crazy because right? Math was the first real too. real street believable dude that would like throw in little freestyles and like throw in little charismatic shit. Joke. I, yeah. yeah. And, Ironically doing kind of that same shit Sirius did and yeah. we all know what happened later on. Yeah, and so with Math the Math and Sirius battle, Math says that someone was throwing towels. Y'all was giving off Fight Club clouds, someone was throwing them. And then he he said he was gonna slap somebody or something if if they threw another towel. They threw one in the overtime. And then y'all disqualified him because he started an altercation over the towel getting thrown. <laughs> that's that's what he said. No, nah, you know what's so crazy? Like he's mm-hmm. not lying. As wow. far as to the point, like somebody, I don't know if they if it was a towel, but somebody did throw something. And mm-hmm. I know I seen him like like yo like throw some chill with the throwing stuff. If you throw something, whatever you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But um. For some reason, I vaguely remember that battle because that's when we was transitioning to the new building. Yeah. You know, um, and that was like a real dungeon gritty style. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and some, he said that he said that they that they stopped the battle because yeah. Well, he said I guess I guess it, the battle went so far that y'all got to sudden death overtime or whatever. Mm-hmm. And like I guess he was going second, I believe he said. And um, he said like after he had already warned them, someone threw a towel again. And he said he he said something or someone swung or he went to grab a dude or something and like tried to go back to rapping and it was like nah you stutter you going <laughs> and the whole battle was just like over. Yeah, I don't I don't I can't say I remember. I do yeah. remember him saying saying something to somebody as far as like yo stop throwing shit or whatever. Like, I, and I think Sirius Jones was kind of like ah, I killed you and I think that's where the math versus Sirius Jones. Yeah, because thing it's started. like it's like um, if it's never if it's never was decided who was the winner, it's like. It's yeah. up to the, if you serious like no I won I'm mad if I'm like no I won mm-hmm. that's up to us you know what I'm saying because we was physically there and it yeah. was really undecided so it's like of course it's gonna and I've seen stuff where they did interviews together and it's always been like a debate between yeah, them yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying so with that with that with that not knowing who who really won it's like you gonna always say like you know we gotta this this needs to be you know we need to figure out who's the better MC you mm-hmm. know um, so th- th- that's another thing I wanted to ask you about two more things is um First off, Math was talking about like when he went over to battle Iron Solomon and like he said that like Fight Club kind of had a problem with it. And um, you just mentioned the thing about like Sirius Jones going over to Smack to battle Mook. And I was, it's funny because I was like, damn, that was like the first like battle rap league conflict. Like they have it all now. Like, oh, you stole my battle and this and that. Yeah, right. So how was it back then being that like nobody had done that before? Like you wanted to do a battle and all of a sudden Smack took math then smack took serious then smack took gin you know what i mean was it like a was, was y'all like button heads over there or like how did that go well i don't i can't i can only speak on for my opinion on that mm-hmm. because at the same time it's like in the beginning you know smack used to be at um smack when loaded lux was there mook was there in the beginning stages you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and them dudes was on smack prior you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying we're messing with smack and everything so it's like um, I guess it's to a point in time. I don't think we ever said like, "Yo, don't go over there and battle, or don't fuck with that league. Stay with us, or whatever." You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just like when I said like I felt some way about, not in a negative way, but to I just wish that that battle would have been on our platform. And this yeah. is my personal feeling. You know what I'm saying? Because that's Mook and Sirius. That's a big situation. Yeah, yeah. And Sirius was 
big at that time. That would have been like an MTV, BET type joint. Right, right. So um, I don't think it's a situation where uh, Smack and Fight Club had, like, bump heads and it was, like, some sort of feud or whatever case Mm -hmm. may be because, like, at the same time in the beginning stages – you know, Smack was Smack came through the, came through our venue. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And like I said, like and that's when that's why I say like Luck is one of my favorites because I seen Luck go through like, you know, we three rounds and he beat about damn near four or five dudes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and that was the days when you know Smack used to come through. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, does that answer your question? Like, did I? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. You got it. Um, and you know, I just got a couple more things I want to ask because we got to wrap it up soon. Is um. First thing is, like, like what happened? Like, you know, like, a lot of footage didn't get dropped. And, like, it seemed like y'all just, like, like I don't know what happened with the business. You know what I mean? Can you, like, kind of shed some light on, like, where all the tapes are at? Or, like, like why y'all weren't as active well, for a period? Well, we just kind of, like, the brand is still there. We're just not doing battles right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not a, it's not a if about the content. It's just a matter of when the content is going to be released. You get what I'm saying? It's not so. So you're saying like old battles that from years ago are still y'all still planning on putting them out type shit? That's what you mean? Or shit, I want them to put it out. That's yeah, what I'm saying it's just a matter. Like I said, it's not a. It's just a matter of when. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, like yeah. like, like we've been we've been having some talks at Rap Grid, man, and it's came up a bunch of times. Like yo, how can we buy the footage? <laughs> or how can we link up with Fight Club to put out they that footage, man? That. Fight Club ain't gonna do that. You know Fight what I mean? Club ain't gonna do that. Hey. Jewish people, if y'all listening, give us some bread. We're going to buy up all the Fight Club <laughs> shit, and we're going to put it all out, all right? <laughs> Man, um, I just want to say two things before y'all, before yeah, y'all yeah, wrap yeah. up with me. Um, I just want to shout out a few people. You know, um, shout out to Oom P. Mm-hmm. Oom P, uh, as far as on Fight Club, he never like really got like uh, the look that he deserved because, he's to me, he's definitely Fight Club elite. I haven't seen him. You know, really take a, 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 a L like that. You know what I'm saying? Something yeah. maybe debatable, but on P. And I see what he's doing right now. I, I bumped into on P a couple of, about a month or two ago, and I shouted him out. You know what I'm saying? Every time we see each other, we shout each other out the whole Uwe movement. Yeah, they, they do big out, things out there. Shot, definitely shout yeah. out to um, Uwe and on P. Um, and all the dudes that, uh, that, that I actually auditioned that came through the whole fight club but never got a chance to get on the show that's mm-hmm. doing their thing right now. That's like yeah. like legends in this shit right now. You know what I'm saying? Cortez was out Cortez, there. Cortez. Lada Zay. Lada Zay. Tay Rock. Swain. Tayshon, Philly Swain. Philly Swain. Yeah. Um, Sarah Connor came through. Yeah, I see. Uh, I saw Reece Sarah Connor. Still in footage, came yeah. through, and she got on the on the on the on the, on the reality Steel, show. I heard Reece that Steel, name. She was on the Man. show. Um, <sighs> Hollow came through the auditions before. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I like, like I, I, man. I mean, and one thing I want to say is like, in, from my perspective, Fight Club was absolutely like a, an incredibly important and like major time and era right, with the battle probably. rap community and like a mm-hmm. huge movement. When that got on MTV and became a household thing, like that took battle rap. That was another one of those enormous steps. I think specifically because of Fight Club. Yeah, you know, much yeah, respect yeah, to what y'all did. Definitely shout out to y'all because the inspiration for Grind Time was definitely Fight Club. <laughs> what Smack was doing, the Elements League in Canada, who was like the first real battle league, and um, what we had just finished doing with Jump Off. You know what I mean? But Fight Club was that was that was the elite shit and mm-hmm. Smack was like the mm-hmm. underground shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So definitely shout out I to I must y'all. have watched those uh, however man I must have watched those M T V two battles a million times every time. Yeah, you know, I know three I'm all o'clock in the word. morning when them shits <laughs> were on right. again. I, I was like, All right, first, let's get it. I remember when it, the around the first time, like when it started the air. Like we used to go by P Crib and we'll sit down and watch it. And we'll sit down and watch it to all the way to credits. To the credit stop, like we just sitting there watching, like yo, this shit real. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, be that's crazy. crazy. Like, man, but you know, definitely shout out to all the rap leagues, man, all the battle rappers, man. Them, the battle battle rappers going somewhere that we don't even expect right now. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. with this whole total slaughter situation, is it's going in the direction where the money dudes go out to really start making some serious money, life changing money. Yeah. This, you know what I'm saying? Because exactly. they they realizing like you don't need to be signed. You know what I'm saying? As far as with this whole internet and social media and stuff, it's like I could book my own show. You know what I'm saying? For one, battle rapping is the entertainment portion of it. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But then these dudes got songs. They can go book to do a song or 
walkthroughs and all that kind of stuff. Now mm-hmm. back then it wasn't. You know, who thought about that with off of battle rapping? You know what I'm saying? Now it's now it's onto the reality shows and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So this shit about to go to a whole nother direction. Yeah. Where well, y'all were, were one of the building blocks. Like I would say, the Fight Club, as far as making battle rappers household names, just like any other like industry rappers that have songs on the radio, ba- Fight Club might be the most important part of that happening. You would you agree? Is there you, any? You know, like, Fight Club Smack did. did not necessarily do that. Like s- the streets knew Mook and shit like mm-hmm. that. Like cats knew that on the DVD that were like on the DVD tip. But as far as like household across the Boy, country, the like cats knowing who, uh, you know, like seeing these battles and seeing Remy Ma and Lady mm-hmm. Luck, I think like that, forty cat that might have been the first time. Shout out to forty. Were, I was on the phone with forty earlier too. Yeah. <laughs> Shout oh out to man, Cal. that dude. I put you in an all white cast like Seinfeld. What? 40, that's my what? 40, 40 my dude. I remember I tell you, 40 was the first one to have the Tommy Martin re- reference. Like Martin <laughs> told Cole, that. you never see your Tommy work. That yeah. was crazy at that time. Word. You know what I mean? But um, 40. I want to I want to I want to let you go on this one, right? On on a light tip. So a hollow battle Arsenal Fight Club. He said. Whoever was editing the footage was editing it to make it look like he was crying <laughs> when Arsenal was battling him, and I was laughing. And I said, "I look, I looked back on it, and I looked at Sirius Jones versus Jin. And when Sirius was really killing him, it looked like Jin was crying. He had the straight cry shots. <laughs> so is there a let's make a nigga look like he's crying conspiracy in Fight Club? <laughs> direct has been thinking about this for years. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> When you look at when you look at um reality show right now, right? Yeah. The actual individual that's on the show, they be like, yo, they edited it that way. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They highlight like the negativity. But it's more so for a shock value. I can't say because I've never sat in the editing yeah, project. Yeah. But, like, it's more so, Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's going on TV and it's for entertainment purposes. Mm-hmm. So you want to see the reaction of the persons like even with with Hollow, it was one time, um, Austin, what he say? He's I think he said you he said some shit, but the reaction on Hollow Face was like, like, what the fuck? Like, he said, yeah, I remember he said that. some shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's like, he was shocked that he said that. So, like, you want to show that, 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 leg that drop. expression, you know what I'm saying? You want to show the expression mm-hmm. on the person, on the person's face, you know, so. Yeah. Um, as far as them crying, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, man. Know, oh, no, go man. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Man, um. I don't think a dude was crying, but I seen a battle where the a dude was getting his ass whipped so bad that the judges had to be like, "Yo, chill, chill." Wow, you, 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 you killing them. Chill. Wow, <laughs> mercy. Like, like, just, like mercy, it was like bro. it was like in unison. Like they stopped it. Yo, chill, 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 yeah. chill. And the whole crowd just left. And the wow. dude was left standing there, like, damn, like that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. So I mean, shout out Fawn Jeff, Executive Nick, International P. P. Anybody else in that? Fight Club. EXE. Yeah. So, I mean, any any last words for um, the people? For the people, man. Um, as far as in the battle world, keep doing what y'all doing. There's leagues that's coming up out the woodworks, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I heard Austin say this before, you can't really monopolize battle rap, you know what I'm saying? Once you got a camera and you got the artists and all that kind of shit, you know you're going to have new battle rappers growing every, mm-hmm. every minute, you know what I'm saying? These young dudes teenagers is they coming out the woodworks and they rapping reality about their life so continue to support battle rap um i definitely want to tell these other leagues don't count fight club out don't 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 Word. think we gone in like a dinosaur you know well, call me man call <laughs> call me call me so we can get that rap grid exclusive <laughs> no man. rap grid rap grid rap grid got the official stamp you know fuck with d-rec you know what i'm saying rap yeah. grid I, I love what y'all doing you know what i'm saying just captivating the culture and everything you know and uh, shout out to Cortez for linking this up. Yes, man. Cortez. Shout out to Cortez. I'll be seeing Cortez in the hood and everything. Cortez, my dude. Yeah. Definitely thank you for this opportunity. Shit. Rap Grid, Von Jeff. We out. <laughs>